So I'm over here in my Trollhead uh, dev org. And what I meant by creating an automated email is uh, let's kind of picture this scenario, right? So let's say we have a case and there is a new business procedure or requirement that says that whenever a case has its status escalated and perhaps let's say the if we jump into a case right here, uh, let's say that the potential liability is yes, then it should automatically email the case owner. I guess kind of the, the idea kind of being that customer care wants to be really on top of cases that are, have potential liability and have been escalated. You know, perhaps we want to avoid any legal troubles, uh, so to speak. So, yeah, this is a very easily done through flows. So I guess let's kind of just jump into that. So to create a flow, let's go ahead and go into to, or click on this little wheel right here and we'll click on setup. And once we're in the setup, we can basically just search for flows here in the search box. And let's go ahead and click on that. And very easily at the top right hand corner, we click on new flow. Once we do that, a new tab will open up and it'll basically ask us what type of flow we want to create. Uh, now, I think I've gone over a few of these of, of these flows in different videos. I'll link a playlist uh, to those if you're interested in watching that. But for us, what we want to do is we want to create a record triggered flow. Basically, whenever something whenever something happens to your record, we want something to happen. That being the email being sent out. Right. So let's go ahead and click on record triggered flow and we'll just uh, hit on create. And here we have the configuration options. So what we want to do, like how I said, is we want to trigger something off of the case. So I'm going to search for the case object right here. Just click on that. And here we have our options, right? So uh, I guess the scenario that I kind of came up with a while ago was that basically whenever the case has the status updated, then we want the email to be sent out. So in this specific situation, uh, I'm going to look for the, the trigger where it says a record is updated. And again, this is very specific to your business use case, right? Like the one I just made up, it fits very neatly within this one right here, but it very, it, like I said, it depends on your specific use case. So anyways, ours is only going to uh, fire when a record is updated. And the conditions we want to have here are going to be, let's say when all conditions are met. Here we have a few options, right? So if we, if we go back to our, our case record here, I, uh, I specifically said, that we want an email to be sent out when the status is changed or it rather is updated to escalated from something else. But the potential liability is just set to yes from the start. So because of that, and, and these are very specific um, conditions I'm setting just to kind of go over these different uh, functionalities that are available to us in the flow. Uh, you might think that we could perhaps just set the status uh, equal to escalated, right? Under this specific circumstance here, and especially if we leave this uh, radio button checked, where it means where it means that when the record is updated and it meets the conditions, it'll send out an email. Uh, that's not actually what we want because if you think about it, well, what's going to end up happening is in this specific case, I just clicked into this case record here, and the status was already set to escalated. So if someone goes ahead and does like some work on it, like for, for example, let's say they update the description and they click on save. If we had this flow active, it would send out an email, which is not what we want, right? What we want is, uh, again, going back to our condition, when the status changes to escalated and we already had the, uh, the potential liabilities set to yes. So we could click on this second radio button where it says only when a record is updated to meet the condition requirements, which I, I guess would work in our case. But then, like how I said earlier, we also want to have the potential liability uh, equal to yes. And the condition I had set previously for us was this field potential liability could just have been yes prior, prior to the status being escalated. So it, it doesn't matter if it got changed in that same update. So in this specific case, this really wouldn't work. Uh, so let's go ahead and set this back. And I know, I don't know if I'm explaining this well, it's been a while since I made a video, uh, but basically, like how I said, I'm just, I'm just creating, I, I kind of created this very contrived example just to kind of show the different options that are available to us in the configuration. So what I actually want in this specific case is to add another condition. And actually, let me, let me go ahead and bump the potential liability to the bottom to kind of keep things nice and clean. And in the second one, we'll replace it with status. 
and this one again we'll just set it to escalated but the first one i'm going to change it to is changed and the value of that is going to be true so essentially what we're saying is if someone updates the record and the record uh update ca uh, contains the changes of the status was changed and it was changed specifically to escalated and it already had or has or will have whatever it is uh potential liability equals yes then we want the email to be sent out so like how i said like how i said earlier this example that i kind of came up with it, it was created specifically strict just to kind of showcase uh these different options here uh hopefully i explained that decently if not like how i said uh, feel free to leave a comment down in, my, in the, the comment section below or submit a question to the Google form if you have something uh, much more nuanced that you want to discuss. And I'll go ahead and do my best to help you out. Uh, and one more uh, last note on this. As you can see here, because I included the is changed operator, we have this thing that pops up that says because we did that, we can't change it to the second option because it kind of defeats the whole purpose, right? This, uh, the way I see it, this is kind of like an all or nothing thing where where you uh, if you did it this way, you would only send any conditions where this where the your fields change to some value, right? Or rather, where your fields equal some value. <clears throat> but if you want to wanted to have the granularity or the control to say, okay, I want to I want to see if this field changed to something within the update, and perhaps this other field, I don't really care if it did change in that specific update, then you would want to do it the way I, I'm showing here. So again, hopefully that makes sense. Uh, the last option in our configuration here is whether we want to do a fast field update or whether it's an actions and related records. And as of now, as far as I know, if you want to send out emails, we have to choose this one right here, like how it says in the description right here. So go ahead and select that and we'll click on done. Once we have all of that, we're basically almost done. Now all we have to do is click on this little plus icon right here and click on action and basically we are just going to search for email and as you can see here we have a send email option uh alternatively if i go back oh sorry about that if i go back on the left hand side you can see here we have all these different uh categories that we, we can select we can just choose email here and then search for it and as you can see we only have one which is just the built-in send email function provided to us by salesforce so if you go ahead and click on that we have a bunch of different things that we can do and i will only only pretty much go over the most basic ones because if i go, go over everything it's probably gonna be a much longer video but again if you guys want to see that feel free to let me know and I'll, I'll make a video on that uh as far as the label goes let's just give it a very simple label like uh email case owner or something along those lines and we'll let the api name auto populates by tabbing out and then what i want to do here uh let's let's include a body and i guess we'll also include a subject and we need a recipient address ID, address, which is basically, you know, where the email will be sent to. Uh, we here have an recipient address collection and a recipient address list. In this case, I'm going to use this. Uh, the way to think about it is a list. If you're familiar with Apex or any programming language, is just a list or an array. And here we have the option to specify an email or emails that we want this email to be sent to. So in this case, like how I said uh, regarding a specific business use case, we want to email the case owner. So the way we do that is let's uh, scroll down and g find the record itself. And then in the record, we're going to look for the owner. So the, uh, so the owner right here, the user, we click on that and then wait for it to populate. And then we're going to look for their email. So scroll down here, here is their email. So essentially it's going to take the, the email of the case owner and it just basically will send them this email to them. I hope that makes sense. All right. So once we have the recipient done here, Let's go ahead and I guess for the subject, so kind of to explain this, we have the option of either just writing some text here directly or of providing an actual resource itself. So I guess I'll show both for the subject. We'll just do a simple text. And then for the body, we'll actually will create a resource to kind of show the differences because I'm going to select some text. It's just going to be some static text that doesn't change. In this case, for the subject, we'll, we'll, we can write something simple like, hey, fix this now or something along those lines like so. And then for the body, we can be a little bit more specific, right? So here I'm going to go ahead and click and click on new resource. And we have a bunch of different options that like we can create a variable, a constant formula, text template, or a stage. Uh, I'm actually going to create a text template because that gives us more uh, options about what we want to include and how to format it as well. So you can see here, text template, it opens up this little page right here. Uh, let's go ahead and give this a name. So perhaps we'll just call this, uh, um, email body i'm not really sure what to call it um and as you can see here here's the body that will be included in the email body so what i'm going to write here is 
now that we have this text template, we can write static text as well as insert some values from our record. So I'm going to say here is fix this case record like so, and then do a little colon. And then here in the insert a resource, I'm going to just uh, grab the record again, and then perhaps just give them like the probably like the ID or maybe the name, one of those, I think either would be fine. I, I guess we'll just give them the case number. Perhaps that's easier for them to search up, right? So yeah, we'll say fix this case record and then Salesforce, the flow will automatically put in the case number right there. That way the user can fix it. I'm sure we can also do like a hyperlink or a link to it as well, but that's kind of out of the scope of this video. So just keep kind of keeping it simple, right? And as you can see here, uh, we can view it as rich text or plain text. Um, we'll keep it as rich text. That way it just looks simple. Um, if we're going to do this though, we do have to do one more additional change. So let's go ahead and click on done right here. And on the bottom where is it says right here, rich text formatted body. We do want to include that. And basically it's just a Boolean. So we'll set it to true basically because our email body is rich text. We want it to be displayed as such. So yeah, hopefully that makes sense. As you can see here, it's not too difficult at all. It's actually pretty simple to, to do. Uh, so now let's just go ahead and click on done to get that done. And as you can see here, that's pretty much it. Whenever our conditions are met and the email will be sent out. So I'm going to go ahead and click on save and we'll go ahead and give this a name. So we'll say just to kind of keep, stay in line with the, the name of this video, uh, we'll just call it create automated email, but you should definitely give your flows much better names than I am right now. Let's go ahead and click on save here. And then don't forget to activate this flow. So once that is done, uh, let's go into our case. I uh, will refresh it just to be double safe. And actually this one already has the status of escalated, so it won't work. Uh, so let's go ahead and just look up a different case. So I'm going to just search for one in my open cases. As we can see here, this one is a new case and the potential liability is set to no. So I'll just uh, change it to yes. And like how I said earlier, when we save the record, the potential liability can either be yes previously to the update or at the same time as the status being changed to escalated because of the way we set up our conditions in the flow. So I'll, I'm just going to do this all at the same time and it should, it should still work just fine. So let's go ahead and click on save here. And after a few seconds, I should see my email or I should receive an email to the case owner that has specified here, which I will show to you guys in a, in a screenshot in a second. So yeah, I hope that makes sense like how i said if you have any questions uh use the google form or leave me a comment down below in the comment section uh consider subscribing i would greatly appreciate it and i'll catch you guys in the next video oh and subscribe to my newsletter because i will be sending out a lot more uh emails to you guys in the form of that newsletter and i'll catch you guys in the next video